Today on Comic Story, and we're going to discover what it was like to be the first Robin, the first person to work with Batman when Batman was learning how to be a surrogate parent. This is the Comic Story and Channel, where I take some of your favorite trade paperbacks and single issues, and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read them dramatically back to you. I basically take a synopsis of the storyline, cut out a lot of the fluff and extra stuff, and I give you the story so that you know what's going on and can pick up the next issues. Or you can go buy the issues supporting the industry and get more context and more beautiful art. All alterations to the panel's text and images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. Today we're going to be looking at the storyline Robin and Batman, which was a three-issue miniseries that came out in DC recently. It tells the story of Dick Grayson right after he became Robin and what it was like dealing with the trauma of the loss of his parents and now being adopted basically by Bruce Wayne and what all of that entails. Honestly, I started this series and it just became one of my favorite miniseries out there and I wanted to bring this to you guys so you could also enjoy it. So let's get into Robin and Batman issues one through three. There's a moment when you think you're wrong about everything, about who you are, who you could be, that all of what you're doing is just a fantasy. But then you start to think that it was just a trick. That this isn't a fantasy at all. That instead, it's just a nightmare. Suddenly, there is nothing but darkness around you, and that darkness has weight. The deeper you fall, the harder it is to see your way out. Before young Dick Grayson could think any more about the darkness, a voice in his ear yells, Now! And he snapped back to reality. He springs into action, knocking out two thugs, stating that maybe the worst part is that he doesn't even know what he wants. Maybe it's better down here. Maybe it's what he deserves. The voice returns, telling him, You're too focused and not paying attention to the whole picture. Dick shouts, I got this! And a third thug grabs him from behind. With quick thinking, Dick grabs a flash pellet, throwing it, and the voice tells him, Abort the mission. You've lost control of it. Dick pulls his earpiece out and continues his fight, barely managing to take the men down. As Batman pulls up, he tells him, I told you to abort the mission. Dick turns back, telling him he had it under control, and Batman asks, Did you? A battering is thrown, knocking out a fourth man that was hidden away. You're not looking at the whole picture. Tunnel vision. Myopic. Now pick up that earpiece and get back in the damned car. On the drive home, Dick tries to speak, but Batman tells him don't. And back at the Batcave, Alfred welcomes the two of them, asking how it went. And Batman shouts, He could have gotten himself killed! He isn't ready, Alfred! Dick yells back at him, I am ready! I would have taken out the driver next! You need more training. More discipline. No more live ops for a while. You'll continue your work here. If I may. But Batman tells Alfred, No, you may not. Dick's behavior is only proving me right. He's having a tantrum like a damn child! Dick storms off and Alfred says, Perhaps a little leniency is needed. The child isn't a soldier. We go to the next day, and at school, Dick draws in his journal ideas for his costume. His mom used to nickname him Robin. Maybe that should be his name, or maybe something darker, like Nighthawk or Nightwing. Maybe it's just all a test. Maybe Batman wanted to see if he'd give up easily. No chance in that. When he gets home, Dick gets to work making his own costume. Bright colors, too. That'll get under Batman's skin. Later that night, Batman follows the thugs from earlier, wondering why they were robbing a meat truck anyway. The men crawl into the sewers and Batman follows, with Robin, not too far behind, stalking Batman who's stalking the men. As Robin is sneaking up on Batman, there's a splash of water and Killer Croc leans over him. Hey kid, what's up? Without a word, Robin swings, but Croc catches the punch, throwing him, asking, Where did you get that costume? Before Croc could even attack again, he feels his arm pulled back as Batman throws a battering, binding his hand. He tells him, get away from the boy. And Croc turns back, throwing Batman, punching him in the ribs. I should have known the kid was with you. How'd you know about me? Croc winds up swinging again, but this time Batman swipes, clawing at Croc's face, hurting him enough to make him pull back. Robin runs up, asking how are his ribs, and Batman yells, what were you thinking? Robin points in the direction where Croc went, asking, Aren't we going after him? And Batman shuffles off. I have two broken ribs. I'm done. Let's go. A short drive later, back to the Batcave. Batman gets out. Alfred hurries over to tend to his injuries with Batman yelling, asking, How did the boy get past you? Especially in that. Robin says that he thought it was a test to see how determined he was to prove that he was ready. Batman looks back scowling, asking, With that kind of outfit, it's ridiculous. How could you go into combat wearing something like that? Robin tells him it's not ridiculous. It was his family's. 
Batman walks up telling him, I know, that's why I made this. He activates a console and a display opens up with a costume inside similar to Robin's, but with more advanced tech. I was going to give it to you next week. I was going to let you join. Robin looks in shock, his eyes wide. If you knew about this, you read my journal. We can't have any secrets here, dick. That was mine. That was all I had that was mine. Robin leaves and Batman asks, isn't this what he wanted, Alfred? It was supposed to be a gift. Robin returns to his room, pulls out his journal with all of his sketches, and he begins to tear it all up. Maybe he was wrong about everything. About who he is, about what he could be. But meanwhile, elsewhere, Croc wanders up to the surface and visits the rundown circus. He looks around at all of the attractions and then stops at the killer Croc display. He thinks back to himself when he used to be in the tank, looking at all the others, including the Flying Graysons. Croc looks up at the trapeze where the Graysons had their accident and then he notices something. He takes a closer look at the poster and he realizes who the young boy he met tonight was. He was Dick Grayson, the child of the Flying Graysons. The next day, Batman works away in the Batcave when Alfred brings Dick down asking, what was the rush bringing Master Richard home from school? They have dinner to make for Master Richard's birthday. Batman puts on his mask telling him that dinner will have to wait. They have somewhere to go tonight that's not Gotham. Dick asks, what do you mean not Gotham? Aren't we going after Killer Croc? Croc can wait. There's something else we need to do. And I'm sorry about your journal, but I think it is time to wear this. Dick looks at the high-tech Robin suit telling him, it's actually kind of cool. Batman tells him to get dressed. He has a birthday present for him. After a quick costume change, Batman and Robin teleport into the Justice League space station and Batman says, welcome to the Justice League satellite, Robin. Robin pauses because that's the first time that he called him that officially. But Batman tells him to just remember what they talked about on the way here. Robin looks forward, telling him, Yes, y yes, sir. Then a voice calls out loud, You gotta be kidding me, not you too, Batman. I thought you'd have better sense. Hawkman walks up looking at Robin and Batman tells him, We have to think about the future. We won't be able to do our jobs forever. Besides, figured you'd approve of the bird theme. As they continue on to the meeting room, Superman waits with all the other heroes in the league and welcomes Robin. You must be with Batman. Welcome to the Justice League, Robin. Before Robin has a chance to respond, Batman says that they cannot get ahead of themselves. They have a mission. Robin can wait with the others. Hawkman will be on monitor duty if they need anything. Wonder Woman then motions back, stating that the others are waiting outside. Keep an eye on them, okay? Robin nods, walking into the rec room and finds the other young heroes in costumes, just like him. Wonder Girl says hi, when suddenly Kid Flash runs up shaking his hand. Hey, Kid Flash! Wonder Girl introduces the others as Speedy and Aqualad. Speedy throws his controller, telling him, All right, I'm bored. We should just follow the Justice League and join their mission. But Kid Flash tells him he's bored because he has ADD. Besides, they're not ready for that. While everyone discusses the good and bad of following the League, Robin thinks for a moment and says, Well, we don't have to follow the JLA on their mission. We could use the computers and find other emergencies that we can handle. Kid Flash can easily check without alerting Hawkman. Aqualad then asks, how are they supposed to get past Hawkman and into the teleporter tubes? And Robin points up at the vents. Moments later, the young heroes teleport down to Coast City to assist in stopping a bank robbery that they can actually easily handle. Robin leads the team on various situations across the world, helping those in need with Hawkman none the wiser because of the vents. But upon the last return, Hawkman hears something in the vents and goes into the rec room asking what's going on. Wonder Girl says, oh, hello Hawkman. As Speedy asks what's up, Hawkman looks around making sure that everyone is still accounted for and scoffs walking back to his post. Once alone, everyone lets out a sigh of relief and Speedy says that that was awesome! Welcome to the club, new kid. Wonder Girl then says, yeah, she's really glad that he showed up. He showed some real leadership out there today. Robin just blushes. Cool, thanks. Moments later, Batman appears and tells him that it's time to go and everyone says their goodbyes. Later back in the Batcave, Alfred asks how was the visit, and Robin runs out yelling, It was amazing! I got to meet Superman, I even shook his hand, I get to hang out with all the sidekicks, and Hawkman's a total jerk! Alfred smiles, telling him that it sounds like he had a wonderful birthday, and Robin begins to walk off, telling him, I did! It was awesome! But Batman stops him. Debrief. Alfred asks, what are you talking about? And Batman waits, with Robin turning back, y Yes, sir, of course. Target 1, Roy Harper, a.k.a. Speedy. He's the easiest to take down. Obviously, his power levels are the lowest, but that doesn't make him the weakest. He has incredibly low self-esteem and overcompensates by acting out and trying to impress. Robin then goes on listing each and every one of the young hero's weaknesses, and Alfred stares, asking, How could you? Batman tells him, 
Robin's a soldier, not some mascot like the other children. If he's going to be in the company of legends and demigods, he needs to know how to defeat them, just in case. They're children, Bruce! Children like him! Why can't you just let him have that? Batman stares at Alfred. I never did. Why should Robin? Alfred storms off, you bastard, under his breath, and Batman places his hand on Robin's shoulder. You did good today. Get some sleep. You have school in the morning. As the coming days pass, Batman and Robin focus their attention on Croc's thugs in an attempt to find out where he's been hiding. After taking down another group, Batman lets Robin get information from one of the men, but his methods seem a bit more extreme. Robin punches the man, breaking his nose, telling him to give it up. Where is Croc? And the man coughs up blood. I don't know! I haven't seen him in weeks! He's gone! Robin begins to punch, telling him that he's lying. Where did he go? But after a few more hits, Batman grabs Robin's arm. That's enough. The next morning, Batman sits reading the paper while Dick eats breakfast when Alfred says that he managed to get all the bloodstains out of the young master's costume. Though he does hope his school clothes won't be so difficult to clean tonight. Dick pauses, saying, School? What day is it? And Alfred tells him Monday. Dick shrugs, telling him he's going to skip today. We're getting close to finding Croc. I still need to run a few soil samples. Alfred tries to argue with him, telling him that the extracurricular activities can wait until after homework. Bruce just kind of shrugs it off and tells Alfred, let him stay home. It's more important than whatever they're teaching him at the academy anyway. After Alfred argues about it and how the school's already paying attention of the weirdness of Dick's life, he storms off and Bruce finally agrees that maybe he should go to school. No one's even seen Croc in weeks. It's possible that he may have skipped town. Dick yells back that it isn't fair. Bruce responds with, Nothing is. After a small argument with another boy at the school, a scruffed voice comes on over the intercom system. Attention, attention, little Robin. You will show yourself now and no one else will get hurt. But if you hide, I will start breaking people, starting with the principal. And if that don't work, maybe I'll tell everyone what your real name is, right, little Robin? Dick sits up in his chair trying to stay calm, trying to think of something to do with Croc on the intercom system at his school when he decides to yell, There's a bomb! Everyone jumps out of their chairs screaming, and Dick uses the confusion to sneak off and try to make a makeshift costume. With a scarf wrapped around his face, he rushes to the principal's office, telling Croc to get away from him. Dick tries to lure Croc out, but Croc grabs him by the leg, throwing him into the wall, stating, I remember those eyes. Same smug, arrogant, entitled look. But Batman breaks through the window, shooting his grappling hook at Croc. Croc grabs the wire, pulls Batman in close, punching his ribs. Did they heal up yet? After hearing the crunch of the hit, Croc laughs. I <laughs> didn't think so. Dick throws himself onto Croc's back, but Croc tosses him off, telling him, I'm going to take you apart. But first, I'm going to make you watch what happens to your daddy. Make you watch just like your other parents. Croc escapes with Batman over his shoulder, and Dick races him, shouting, We gotta save Batman! I messed up bad, Alfred. I was too weak to stop Croc, and he took Batman. Alfred tells him to slow down. Perhaps they should contact Gordon or even the Justice League. Someone with experience who can handle Croc. Dick tells him, No, this is my responsibility. I'm Batman's partner. I can't fail now. I can't lose him too. Not like them. Not again, Alfred. You don't need to do this alone. Batman doesn't work alone. That's why you're here. Dick looks back for a moment and then grabs his costume, telling him, I'm sorry, but this is how it needs to be. This is what Robin is. Dick begins to think of the only place that Croc could have possibly recognized him. So he goes to the circus where his parents had their accident, remembering when Bruce once offered to buy the place just to tear it down. But Robin didn't want that because even though it pains him to be there, it's the last bit of his parents that he had left. It was his home. And Croc was here too. He didn't remember it at first, but Croc grew up in the circus as well. He just looked different, smaller. He was a child. It's so obvious now that he was sad, trapped, probably mistreated. But he didn't see that side of this place. All he saw was the happiness. And Croc only saw their happiness while he alone suffered. As Robin enters the main area, he sees Batman hanging and chained up in a pool of water, with Batman calling out, telling him, Don't come any closer! Robin hops over the rail, telling him that he's going to get him down. He'll just pick the locks off and they could take Croc out together. But Batman yells, No! This is what he wants! Get out! Go! Robin tries to reason with him, but Batman stops him. You're a good boy. No matter what you have said or done in the past, I am very proud of you. You don't have to do this. Yes, I do. I won't lose you too. Robin begins to get to work, picking the lock when his fingers slip and he drops the pick in the water. As he's searching, here's a splash as Croc jumps in. Little buddy! Robin spins back attacking, but Croc laughs, punching him. 
You want to be treated like a man? Then I'll hit you like one. With a heavy hit to the stomach, Robin screams as he falls to his knees, and Croc asks, What? Can't breathe? Can't have you die just yet. After kicking him while he's down, Croc picks Robin up by his cape. The last thing you'll get to see is what I used to see all those years behind the glass. Cold, wet, and alone. While the flying graces bathed in applause. Want to know what I got instead of applause? Fish guts. Now let's see how you like it. He holds Robin under the water for a bit and then pulls him back up. Do you see? Do you see how cold it is down there? Robin is thrusted back in again, and as he holds his breath, he begins to think that this fight is exhausting. But he finally knows what he needs to do. Because it's so much easier once you give in if you just stop struggling and let the darkness surround you. You'll see that it's not so bad after all. And then, everything fades to white. Dick Grayson looks around to see his parents looking back at him, asking if that's them. A hand reaches out and a voice tells him, Open your eyes. Open your eyes, Robin. Robin opens his eyes, and just before him is the pick. Croc pulls Robin back out, telling him, Not yet. I want you to see. We'll watch Batman fade together. Robin waits for a moment and then throws his arm back, stabbing Croc in the eye with the pick, finally freeing himself. Croc shouting, I'll kill you! Robin turns back, firing his grappling hook around a post and uses it to attack out of Croc's range, telling him, I'm Robin! Robin! And after several kicks in the head, Croc falls. Robin jumps down, hurrying back to pick up the lock, keeping Batman under the water. Moments later, Batman falls in and Robin hugs him as he sits back up. It's okay. You did it. Good boy. You're a good boy, Dick. Time would move on, and since his fight with Croc, Dick decided he didn't want to surround himself in that darkness any longer. He wanted to experience the world. He made friends with his classmates. He even joined the ongoing D&D game that he was invited to and fought against. He continues being the Robin that Batman wanted as well. He tells himself that it's okay to be afraid of things. That he can let fear in and it can show you things. You can actually find out who you really are. Robin doesn't need to be the next Batman. He can be something else, something better. And the best part? He knows he doesn't need to do it alone. He doesn't have to be in the dark. He can be the light. He can be Robin. And there you have it, a little bit of an addition to the Robin origin story. And I loved it. I thought it was great, a lot of fun. And I hope you guys did as well. There's no more to the story, at least right now. But if you want more Batman-related stories, Robin-related stories, Spider-Man, Punisher, Daredevil, we're doing it all here five to seven days out of the week. Make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, and turn on that notification bell. And I will see you guys next time right here at the Comic Story and Channel.